everyone, welcome to the Galactic Flyer Storytime. My name is Anna, and today I'm going to be reading you a story about some caterpillars who had a great deal of fun, but they also faced a big worry. Once upon a time, or perhaps it was a thousand times, in a beautiful green wooded area upon the leaves of one particular flower, there were the tiniest little golden eggs you can imagine. It was all set along towering mountains with their lush forests and snow-capped peaks. The time of the year was spring, as it had also been a thousand times before. Giant oaks and small bushes covered the land, all sprouting their fresh spring leaves. The meadow was filled with flowers of every imaginable color, as if some artist had painted it while feeling in a very cheerful mood. The tiny pale golden eggs that had been there for a few days now, and something inside was just beginning to move. That evening brought some clouds to the wooded area, and the clouds brought a little shower of rain. The next morning, everything seemed a little greener and more beautiful. Finally, that afternoon, one of the eggs opened up and a very small baby caterpillar made her way out of the egg and into the world. She looked around and immediately was delighted by the sense of something that seemed very familiar to her. It was the smell of the milkweed plant upon which her egg had just hatched. I don't know how anything could seem familiar to a newly hatched caterpillar, but she knew what she knew, so she began to chew. As she busily dined on the milkweed, other eggs began to open up and popped out a little caterpillar who was also delighted by the smell of the milkweed and also began to chew. When the first caterpillar noticed that she had company, she said, how do you do? My name is Margie. The boy caterpillar looked up with a mouthful of milkweed and said, Hobadib is Oscar. Do you want to be my friend? She was quite baffled by this and said, what language is that? That doesn't sound like caterpillar. After a good swallow, he said, Hi, my name is Oscar. Do you want to be my friend? Sure, Margie replied. This is a wonderful flower, but it sure gets lonely sometimes with no one to share it with. Suddenly, two more eggs began to hatch, and caterpillars named Harry and Sally were born. They all quickly made friends, as they also did with the 12 other caterpillars that hatched on that day. All of them were having a great time. They would talk and play for a while, and then they would turn their attention to the milkweed and chew and chew. The more they would chew, the more they grew, until at last they were big enough to have some real fun. The happy young caterpillars would spend their warm days sliding down leaves or racing up the stem of the milkweed. One of their favorite games was to roll up like a hoop and roll down a leaf, and then at the last second, catch themselves onto the edge of the leaf and swing down the branch below. One of their favorite songs would go like this. Milkweed, milkweed beneath my feet. It's good to play on, it's good to eat. I'm thankful for the milkweed to shine in trees. I'm thankful I'm not always busy like the bees. Late one evening, just as the sun was setting, they were rolling down leaves when Margie forgot to stop in time and went rolling right off the leaf. The poor girl sailed out into the air and tumbled to the ground with a big thump. All of the caterpillars gasped as they saw what happened and scurried down the leaf to see if Margie was okay. Margie stood up on her hind legs and called out to the caterpillars that she was just fine and a head popped up from beneath the ground. It was a crusty old earthworm feeling as nasty as ever. Well, maybe you'd be fine, he said, but I have quite the headache now thanks to you. Why don't you ever watch where you're going? I'm sorry, Margie said. It was an accident. Yeah, 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 scorned the worm. You caterpillars are all alike. You play, play, play. Every year, it's the same thing. The caterpillars come out and play all day, and we earthworms are below, trying to work or get some shut-eye. Don't you know we worms have a life, too? Just because we only come above ground in the night doesn't mean you can fall out of the air and land on us like we're your own personal cushions. The caterpillars were shocked. This was a new world, and they had no idea there was such a thing as an earthworm. In fact, they were so very young and having no books to read, they didn't know much of anything except for chewing and playing. Sorry, Margie said. It was an accident. But tell me more about what you said about caterpillars coming every year. 
Not much to tell, the earthworm answered. They come and cause a lot of noise and trouble, and then they leave. Where do they go? Margie asked. We don't plan on going anywhere. We love it here. Doesn't matter, the earthworm answered. Isn't your choice. You will go away too, or my name isn't Horace Wormwood. Soon, one by one, you will all find yourselves in a chrysalis, and this is the last we'll have to put up with your nonsense. I say good riddance. Chrysalis? What does chrysalis mean? Oscar asked. What's a chrysalis? Margie wondered. Oh, you'll find out soon enough, the earthworm laughed as he pulled himself back into his hole. You'll find out soon enough. As Horace disappeared down the hole, the caterpillars could hear his echoing voice jeering at them as he said, That's the way life is. You work, you eat, you sleep, and then someone takes you fishing. It's a hard life, my little pretties. The caterpillars were very upset and looked at each other wondering what in the world is this earthworm talking about? As Harry at last broke the silence, he said, I think the old worm is crazy. He's been under the ground for too long, if you ask me. They all agreed, nodding their heads and promising themselves that they would not go anywhere. The next morning, the sun came up to a glorious day. The breeze was blowing in just the right way to keep their air nice and cool. In fact, it was such a perfect day that it made the words of the old earthworm seem like all make-believe. The caterpillars soon forgot about the scary words they had heard and returned to their life of eating, playing, and generally enjoying themselves. As the caterpillars grew stronger and larger each day, they thought of new games to play. Sally thought of a game where they would all grab hold of each other and form a long rope, then would swing back and forth from the leaves. At evening time, they would gather around and sing happy songs about the wonderful taste of milkweed, the happiness of sunshine, and just their general thankfulness for life. They never saw much of the earthworms because they usually went to bed just as the earthworms were waking up and coming up from the ground. But still, sometimes as they lay on a leaf trying to sleep, they would think about the words of the old earthworm. But each morning was a new day, and they would roll out of bed merrily and drink the dew from the morning leaves and chew away at the milkweed, which seemed to grow faster and faster the more they ate it. The caterpillars played all sorts of games, but they noticed they were not moving as fast as they used to. They ate more and more, but instead of playing all the time, between meals they were beginning to take more midday naps. But it was all still so wonderful. What could be better than friends, sunshine, and milkweed, they wondered. One morning, they all woke with the anticipation of a great joy that had been there every morning when Oscar said that he didn't really feel like eating anymore. Would you just like to play all day instead, Margie asked. No, I don't really feel like playing either, Oscar said. I feel kind of strange. Then Oscar began to walk over to a branch of a nearby bush and he did the strangest thing. He grabbed onto a leaf with his back feet, and then he began to change. Little by little, something was happening to Oscar. The old worm was right. Oscar is changing, Margie gasped. All of the caterpillars gathered around Oscar and cried. He told them not to worry. It'll be fine, he said. The caterpillars on the milkweed plants encouraged Oscar and told him they wished him the best and said if there was anything they could do to just ask. But soon Oscar was in his chrysalis and the caterpillars all came together to remember the good times they had shared with him. They talked about what kind of a caterpillar he had been and how he would always point out the tender buds of the milkweed to the younger caterpillars and share it with them. It was a very dark day for everyone. In days to come, the younger caterpillars continued to play and the older caterpillars would share the wisdom they had learned in the evening get together. Then one morning they awoke to see that Margie had also become a chrysalis and was gone. After that, it was one solemn time after another as each of the caterpillars passed into chrysalis and was entombed in the hard green shroud. Horace Wormwood would pop his head above the ground in the middle of the day sometimes and jeer at the caterpillars. Didn't I tell you it would all come to bad, he would say. Day after day, I had to listen to your songs of thanksgiving and happiness, and now you know it, it was all for nothing. Kevin, one of the last remaining caterpillars, looked down at Horace and said, We are still thankful for all of the wonderful days in this beautiful land. We are thankful for the sunshine and the milkweed and for the good friends who love each other. In fact, Mr. Wormwood, I dare say that if I were to become a chrysalis tomorrow, I would still be thankful for each and every day of my life. 
Bah humbug, said the earthworm as he slithered back into his hole. Well, the days brought only more friends crystallizing away. And the remaining group of friends knew it was only a matter of time for them. I wonder what this all can mean, asked Kevin. It really just doesn't seem fair at all. At last, the morning sun came up as usual, but there were no caterpillars left to greet it. The earthworms would could be heard singing a terrible song below. The song went, The caterpillars came our way, planned to stay, played all day. Now they've all gone away, and the earthworms shout hooray. It was a nasty little song, but then it was sung from their nasty little hearts. Hearts that never were thankful for any day. Hearts that never learned how to live in the first place. Well, the days moved on into summer. The sun came up each morning and the gentle rain still watered the milkweed, which had now flowered and was forming seeds for the next year's young milkweed plants. There was no longer the songs of the caterpillars as they played or the chewing sounds as they feasted on their beloved milkweed. The crickets still played their songs of the night and the owls still hooted from the deep woods. The memory of the happy caterpillars lingered on. One morning, while the earthworms lay deep in the ground asleep, the most amazing thing happened. Margie and Oscar's chrysalis were now moving. The outer shells were beginning to tear apart. To his surprise, it was not a caterpillar at all. They were the most wonderful creatures he had ever seen. As they emerged from their chrysalis, they stood there looking at each other. Is that you, Oscar? Margie asked. Yes, we have changed, he said. You have beautiful wings now, Margie. So do you, she answered. Their wings were still wet and kind of folded up, but the morning sun was quickly drying as they hung upside down from the milkweed. The wings were beginning to hang down straight and they were strong, catching the light gusts of wind. Soon others were beginning to emerge. Margie and Oscar tried their new wings and took to the air, flying high above the milkweed, then high above the mighty oaks. They were now butterflies. Who could have dreamed, said Margie. I thought it was all over, Oscar said. I guess it was just the beginning. As the other caterpillars began to emerge as butterflies from their chrysalis, Margie and Oscar would fly down and greet them. It was one glorious party. They all admired each other's new wings and hugged. At last, all of the friends had come out of their chrysalis and discovered the wonders of flying. Then something inside told them that it was time to fly far, far away. It was that same inner voice that had told them to eat the milkweed from the start and to form a chrysalis. They lifted themselves high into the air on their colorful wings, soaring above the hilltops and heading to a place on the far side of the earth. One could wonder how such young butterflies knew anything. But they knew what they knew, and onward to their new home, they flew. A place that their parents had flown before, and their grandparents, and a thousand other generations of monarch butterflies before them. As they flew along to their new home, they made more songs. One of their songs went like this. Heavy were our hearts so dreary, now we fly so high and cheery. We thought that joy was all undone, but today our new world has just begun. From here we see the grandest view, understanding things we never knew. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope that you enjoyed this story time. If you'd like to see more, please see our other videos because we have lots more stories coming your way.